company AL stands for Active Learning Activities. So today I'm going to share on the to end division of a class station. Okay. Um, the next one will be uh, informal uh, cooperative learning activities. CL stands for cooperative learning activities. And uh, my experience on the G saw classroom, and finally references. References, okay. Right. Next slide, please. Okay. So, uh, I still, I mean, all of you still with me. What is OBE? Is a uh, outcome based. E stand for. Education, okay. Um, right, so what's the difference is we have the desired product. Compared to the previous one, it's just a product specs and uh, with unknown process. So through OBE, we actually uh, modify the process so that we get a desired product, okay? Right, next slide, please. Okay. So basically, we are shift from the old um, paradigm to the new paradigm. We, we are focused on the student-centered um, learning. So we are focused on how students can um, receive a lot of information, how they can, we can prepare the uh, environment so that they are uh, it will help in terms of learning activities, okay? So in new paradigm, we are also consider uh, behavioral um, objective, and uh, finally, the most important thing is the, the outcome, okay? So in this uh, new paradigm, um, we are hoping to get more actively participation of students in the class, okay? Right. Next slide, please. Okay. Why is it important? Why active learning is so important? Because of, oh, okay, <laughs> interruption. Uh, right. So basically, it's how we could retain the information. Okay. Right. So uh, this slide showing the cone of uh, learning where if students participate in the class, actively participate in the class, that means they can retain more uh, knowledge, memories, okay? Up to 90% if they do a lot of activities, okay? And um, uh, doing a dramatic presentation, okay? Also doing the real thing. So they are uh, actually hands-on, more hands-on activities, okay? Right, next slide, please. Okay, so um, this is a whole range, okay, of the from uh, instructor center to the student center, okay? So the top one is a conventional uh, approach. The bottom one is a, a more student centered learning, okay, from the le uh, active learning. And then we have collaborative, and then uh, the third one is a cooperative, and uh, finally the most uh, favorable uh, in a, a student-centered category is problem-based learning. But for today, we're gonna touch a bit on the cooperative learning. Okay, thank you, next. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so, uh, for introduction, what is a uh, cooperative learning? I'm sure you heard about the word cooperative learning. Okay, um, it just uh, to refresh our memory. What, what is a uh, cooperative learning or CL? So there are five principle of cooperative learning. Okay, number one is a uh, positive independence. Number two is uh, individual accountability. Number three is face to face promotive interaction but of course for new norms okay there is quote unquote face to face 
Okay. Um, students are interacting in the uh, not real world. Okay. Virtual. Right. Number four is a uh, appropriate interpersonal skill. And uh, fifth, regular group function assessment. Okay. So I'm gonna go very brief on each of the five principles of cooperative learning. Next slide, please. Okay, so basically, uh, the first, I mean, uh, first independence is student work cohesive group to, to achieve shared learning objective. I mean, they are working together, okay, looking for information, and then shared among, among students, okay? Number two, individual accountability. That means students they are share their ideas from the uh, uh, different source. Okay, get together and then share the idea and have a discussion. Okay. Um, the next one is a uh, promoting interactions. That means students are actively working uh, with working with the other um, group members. Okay. Um, in order to solve the problems. Okay. Number four, interpersonal and social skill, uh, where students work together, trust each other, and resolve conflicts uh, constructively to achieve a common goal. And uh, the fifth one is a uh, group processing, um, where it involves reflections of the learning process, okay, contributions, and also activeness effectiveness of the contribution of the members in the groups. Okay, next. Okay, um, I think you need to click one more. Yeah, so corporate learning, corporate learning is not students sitting around tables studying together. I mean, not just um, get together and sitting around the table, you say, I mean, you claim it's a corporate learning. Also, CL is not a group project with one or more students doing all the work. Okay, but most important thing, CL is normally used when students are assigned in a team for projects. Okay, um, it's not only for tutorial and project, but also while teaching. I will show you some example later on. Okay, next. Right, so basically in terms of structures, there are three uh, cooperative learning structures. One is informal. Informal is an ad hoc group. For example, you have, um, you handle one session, so you just form the group, okay? Um, number two is formal, that means it's uh, for one semester, okay, for long-term groups. And the third one is a cooperative-based group. Well, um, you have a set same groups from the year one, from semester one up to your student graduate. Okay, next. Right, so what is the aim of informal cooperative learning, okay? So number one, to help students, to focus student attention on the material to be learned. Um, also, during the activity, we set a mood for conducive learning. Number three, organize and advance the material to be learned in the class. Um, in this session, we're gonna, I'm gonna share an uh, example of book and approach, where the material is arranged in such a way students could follow easily and understand uh, subject matters. Okay, uh, the next one is to uh, ensure student progress, the material being taught at the desired cognitive level. Okay, next. Right, so this is a simple, okay, a simple but effective design of typical class session with active learning activities. Okay, um, they call it book and division, where we have a row of books. Okay, start with the advanced organizing, how we start the intro, and then we have 
uh, intermittent uh, activities, okay, lectures and activity interaction between students, okay. And finally, we have a conclusion or summary, okay. Click. Can you click? Yeah. So basically, there are three important uh, sections there. One is organized, how we introduce or how we start our lecture or learning activity. And then we have intermittent discussion. And finally, we have closure focus discussion. Okay, there are three main um, segments. Okay, right. Next. Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier, we have three uh, segments, very important segments. First is an advanced organizer, where before we start our lecture, normally we, um, the uh, instructor will share uh, videos uh, to initiate the learning environment. Okay. Um, perhaps come up with questions, okay? Um, for example, advanced organizer, we can start with brainstorming to see the uh, prior uh, knowledge of the students, okay? Perhaps we could um, focus on the listing on the important uh, key point uh, to be addressed during the learning activities. Uh, or perhaps we should we, we can come up with the opening question, asking for the student to answer one or two questions. Okay. And uh, the fourth is uh, it's, uh, instructor three, focus discussion, discussion fast. Okay. And then uh, interm intermittent uh, discussion activity, you're gonna, there are a lot of example here. Uh, of course, and I'm going to go through all the um, terms there. So basically, it's a um, three to five minute activity. Okay, they are working with pairs. I mean, students working within neighbors. Okay, discuss on the uh, topics or points or questions. Okay, um, okay. There are a lot of example here. One is a thing pair share. So the uh, instructor will pose the questions, and then students start to um individually looking for answers and then they have a discussion and then finally they will share the uh, answer in the class okay and uh, there will be interaction between student and also other students okay and uh, of course at the end we have a closure focus discussion where we come up with the uh, for example two minute papers uh, one final question or closure review pairs. Okay. Next. Right. This is a, a an easy example. Um, what we did during the uh, previous activity. Um, out of twenty uh, informal CL activities, uh, we come up with. Simple diagram uh, in uh, understandable understand, uh, way of uh, explaining the the idea of each of the categories. Okay, uh, here's an example. Okay, next one. Okay, so this also showing the um, how the session is conducted, like a brainstorming. Okay, team play share in a simple diagram. Okay, it's a cartoon uh, diagram. Um, basically, it, in, it will stimulate or promote the interaction between the students. Okay, right. Next. Okay, this is uh, what I did during the uh, previous um, class or course. Okay, this is a basic genetics. So this subject actually, I already break the uh, uh, this lecture into several sections. Okay, start with the uh, coming and uh, 
Next slide, please. Okay, this is an example. The course CLO1. Okay, course learning outcome number one. So this is just an example. Okay, this is what we're going to achieve. Right, and then since this is our first class, so I'll start with the start the class with the ice breaking. Okay, ice breaking. Um, so make sure they are um, uh, they feel comfortable with other group members. Okay, next please. Okay, this is uh, one of the ice breaking sessions. So. Um, uh, Maybe, I mean, students can figure out what is a true statement about their friends. Okay, make, maybe the uh, first student will come up with uh, several statements about themselves. And then uh, the other member will try to figure out which one actually true statement about, about uh, their friends. Okay. And then uh, perhaps for opening questions, okay, we should. We can ask students what is the principle of Mandel law, for example. Okay, um, right. So, so you, right. Instead of come up with a question, we also can use Mentimeter. This is an example. Um, if we can use Mentimeter to pose a question so that we, uh, we, we get an idea, okay, how deep in terms of knowledge Student have prior uh, lecture. Okay, this is an example. Uh, we can use the tools, okay, like a multimeter. Next. Okay, so as usual, I mean, after the openings and uh, ice, uh, ice breaking or brainstorming, uh, we have a lecture, normal lecture, for uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And then, uh, the next will be uh, activity. Next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, one of our activity uh, about Mandel uh, cross. Okay, so um, uh, we do the activity and a uh, student will have a discussion with the other students. Uh, we can do it uh, online. Okay, so they, they can, we, we, of course, we need to decide who are their group members, okay, uh, in the in, uh, beginning of the class, okay. Right, so this is a, just an example of question and answers, okay. And then we follow up with another lecture, okay. Right, this is another lecture example. And then after 50 minutes, we uh, take a break for another activity. Okay, this is another question. Okay, right. So uh, basically, from here we uh, we know when the student are uh, they know how to calculate the uh, dihybrid cross, for example. Okay, right. Next, and then the answers. Okay, and then uh, finally we have two minute paper. I choose two minute paper. So all students, they need to take out a piece of paper, okay, and then they need to summarize the important point of the concept or principle uh, that was learned in class. So from there, you know, students will, uh, they know what they um, manage to secure or manage to retain from the class, okay? Right, and uh, this is an example of summary. Okay, summary one, um, okay, and summary two. Okay, yeah, this is an example. Okay, right, next slide, please. Okay, this uh, uh we have a web station. Okay, so most of the time, um, it's very hard to get 100% uh, at attendance. So I mainly get uh, around 50%, okay? Right, but I did share the, the uh, uh, videos with students, okay? Okay, next one, please. Right, so um, 
this is very practical for a uh, normal uh, normal uh, learning activity but we can create um, using uh, the same method or same approach for online learning okay it's an example of hutagogi learning activities using jigsaw method um, hopefully you are aware of the what is jigsaw method um, okay so this is uh, what I did for um, MM, MMBT1233. Okay, so, so uh, from here, what I've learned is that uh, it's good to, to uh, give a, like a start to students to look for the information then uh, the learning process will be uh, more uh, smooth okay right so this why well, uh, when i apply to the uh, mmbt so for example we uh, due to the hitagogi we need uh, it's a self-directed learning activity so that means um, we need to fo um, form a, a team members okay um, about five to six to be effective and then uh, each of the students, they need to come up with the uh, search for information. For example, in this case, the temporary emergency system. What is temporary emergency? They need to get information from different sources. Uh, for example, internet. I think internet is one of their source. Right, or papers. Okay, related papers. Um, okay. Right, and then. Uh, uh, in this activity, because it's a jigsaw puzzle, we need to, uh, in, if there are six members in each group, so all the group, okay, all the group members need to be assigned one title, for example. So first um, student assigned with Rita, next student twin file, for example, okay? So all together, if they form a home group, in home group with individual tasks, okay? Right, and then uh, next one, next slide please. Okay, so all the, um, that uh, puzzle represent the students. So then they will form new expert groups, okay, together with other groups. You will form expert group one, two, up to six, for example. Okay? And they have a discussion in the expert group. Okay? After five minutes, uh, you will return to the home group and share the, the knowledge. Okay? Knowledge or um, digest information from expert groups. Okay? Right. Next. Right, this is uh, just a comparison between traditional classroom and G4 classroom. Okay, so G4 puzzle um, uh, favor the student uh, discussion and also interaction. Okay, compared to the traditional classroom where the teacher is a main uh, uh, important role or so rule in this uh, traditional classroom, okay, compared to the jigsaw uh, classroom where students need to make an effort looking for uh, information, okay. Right, next. Okay, this uh, example of the uh, activities, uh, home group and then uh, expert groups, um, can you click on the, yeah, there's a arrow there, okay. And then finally, they need to uh, return to the uh, home group and then uh, start to share the information or the knowledge uh, from all individual uh, expert groups, okay. Right. So this is uh, um, how 
I mean, that is a question on how they're going to um, share the outcome of the uh, the activities. Um, they need to post in the Padlet. Okay, I'm not so sure whether if uh, Dr. Izati, if you click on the uh, Padlet, can you? Yeah, this is a temporary emission system where we use Padlet to present all the outcome of the learning activities. Okay, from each group, they will share uh, pro and cons about each individual system. Okay. Right. Next slide. Okay. Uh, this is a reference um, uh, on the uh, implementation of student centered learning part one. Uh, okay. So um, engaging. Uh, so we have another session where it's part two. So for this session, I will share only the part one. Okay. Right, thank you for your participation. Okay. And uh, I welcome any questions from floor. All right, so thank you, Dr. Azmair. Um, so uh, I will open a Senate session, but I think Dr. Huza asked a question just now. Uh, Dr. Huza. Na cakap ke? So, kalau Dr. Huza nak cakap, saya unmute kan. Dr. Huza dengar ke? Ya, Dr. Huza. Oh, okay. Okay, tak apa saya... Ah, saya tolong bacakan lah. Alright. Okay. Dr. Huza nak cakap ke? How do yeah the question is how do we ensure DCL can be set up and followed for online teaching that involve big class? Mm. Okay. So uh in the old version of Webex, I, I'm not so sure about the uh new version, probably not so much difference. We can have a different group split. Okay. So we can put them in a group, different groups. Um, I'm not so sure how to do it, but there is a button there we, where we can group our students according to the groups. Okay. Right. Is that so your question? Not sure. Sama ada Dr. Huzan nak cakap ke? Tak nak. Uh, Dr. Huzan okay ke? Tengah ke? We can actually uh, put the uh, classification where you can uh, um, put the, uh, the student into groups using WebEx. But previously, I've been using Google uh, Meeting. Oh, okay. And then I can't actually, unless uh, the only way I have to have the peer assessment, uh, peer review. Say whether they are being uh, participating well uh, among the group. Okay, thank you, thank you. Baru tahu ada way back. Ah, uh, way back. Um, activity ni, um, Dato Uza, dia, uh, they just, um, student won't be assessed. Okay, won't be assessed. It's, okay. um, uh, it's some of the activity, um, form of the activity, uh, where they are, uh, given a chance to enhance their learning uh, experience and so on. Okay, so for if we're gonna uh, assess your how they work, uh, we need to have another another settings, uh, special CLO for example. Uh, in the class, I have a PBR session where students they are working in a group. They need they need to come up with a report. Okay, and also they need to uh, they need to do a peer self assessment. So from there we can uh, predict how good is uh, the work, um, how they work in a group. Okay, and then uh, finally we can have a auto rating uh, 
um, alterating formula where we will alterate the marks. Okay. That will be more uh, one of the reasons, another one of the reasons that the students uh, normally request for meaning they, they're being doing a lot of work, so they've been uh, asking if it be like a bonus for them, 5% at least, which uh, somehow uh, kind of reluctant to give because we have to follow the CLO, right? But it's not in the CLO. Yeah, so yeah. How yeah. do I, yeah, right? How so, presentation, I uh, encourage students to, I mean, to actively participate in the, for example, Kaho visit, and uh, um, of course, I need to spare some of money that those who are actually uh, participating in the class, they will at the end they will get uh, some um, not so sure about it's a present or something like that. It's a surprise for them. Okay, so but the thing is, uh. Most of the time, I mean, they are all on the active student. They are always, they are always, uh, I mean, uh, top students. Okay, so maybe we need to, like, uh, uh, this morning session, we need to do a screening, looking for the uh, uh student who not uh, but actively participate in the class. Okay, but to enhance the uh, or to promote the. Activity, Learning activity, I normally will uh, spare some money for special or, or for for surprise or for present, for example. Okay, I still owe them present for this coming session. Okay. <laughs> not, not that much. I mean, uh, yes. Yeah, I know. Maybe few few ringgit. Okay, so they are excited to, to get involved with the activities. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. But yeah, as always, uh, student will demand for marks. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Just as usual. All right. Uh, any other questions from um, from 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 anyone else? Okay. Uh, kalau ada question boleh je tulis dekat chat ataupun try to unmute. Hmm. Try to unmute. <laughs> saya minta maaf memang saya tak pandai benda ni sangat. Tapi ah uh, okay, no mind kita try. Okay. Alright. Okay. So I hope uh, that was a good uh, brief uh sharing sharing session on how the Tasman has conducted um active learning uh specifically uh using cooperative learning which I guess uh pun tak tahu sama ada student uh adakah mereka macam mana dari segi feedback the Tasman daripada student bila doktor buat cooperative learning? Um people share supaya orang lain pun boleh inspire to do this kind of activity. Yeah. I said about uh, participation. I mean, uh, most of the time, you get involved is a uh, act active student. Yeah. So, what about always... non-active? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, if you look at the uh, attendance, most of the time, I'm only ma can manage to get a fifty percent uh, out mm -hmm. of, I mean, fifty percent attendance. Okay, um, and they're quite quiet. No, I mean, uh, it's not that easy to get a feedback from them. Okay. Um, I mean, but somehow you manage to do cooperative learning via online. Uh, via yeah, online. Quite very challenging because there are a lot of work to be done, and then uh, of course you need to prepare. Uh, quite. Uh, I mean, uh, it's time consuming. Yeah. Anyway, so then keep on complain a lot of. Uh, I mean, assignment and so on. Okay. But sure we are here to help students to learn so that they are uh, at any stage or any uh, course, they are, they are there, ready to learn. Okay. Of course. They have to learn in any way. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Azmine. Uh, uh, we'll be moving on um, to next session if there is no other questions from the audience. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Azmine. Okay, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Salam. So for the uh, for the participants, uh, everyone definitely is welcome to listen to Dr. Saliha because um, we'll move on to Dr. Saliha session very shortly. <laughs>